As much as I am somebody who loves math and science, and I love reading textbooks and articles about different projects, the one thing a textbook will never teach you how to do is how to actually build something and make an idea into a concrete reality. The ability to build something is a skill in itself that has to be learned through, well, building stuff. And so no amount of theory or reading is going to be a substitute for actually sitting down on a bench and actually putting something together. The bench is very much the place where your ideas become a reality instead of just something that stays in your head. For instance, building this 125 watt laser has given me the excellent opportunity opportunity to learn how to 3D print stuff. I'm somebody with no background in mechanical engineering, AutoCAD, or even Blender 3D modeling. But the situation has given me an opportunity to learn 3D modeling, AutoCAD, and Blender. Oftentimes, the best way to learn is by trying something and see if it works out. If it doesn't, scrap it and change it. If it does, use it. The heart of the project is obviously the Nub M37, a 125 watt laser diode array. I knew from the beginning of this project that this laser diode array would produce a tremendous amount of heat, and obviously being able to dispose of this heat is a very critical part about not burning the laser diode array. A gun wouldn't be very useful if it wasn't able to actually handle the recoil energy when it's launching the projectile. If the gun just explodes, it's not very useful to the host or even the user. The same very much goes for high power lasers. If the system can't adequately handle the amount of thermal recoil being generated by the laser, it's not a very useful laser. To really get the system at full power, I have to power at 96 volts and get 3.3 amps going through the laser diode array. This means the total electrical power being supplied to the system is around 320 watts. Semiconductor layers or diodes are about 40% efficient, meaning that only 40% of the power supplied is being converted into optical power. Hence, the Nub M37 125 watt laser diode array is only capable of 125 watts of optical power. If 40% of the supplied power is being turned into optical light, then the remaining 60% gets turned into thermal waste. Operating the laser diode array at full power means that there's going to be around 200 watts of thermal waste power being generated at any given point in time. The great thing about knowing how much thermal waste you're going to be generating is that you can scout the landscape to see what kind of appropriate heat sink you need to actually cool your laser. Since we're dealing with about 200 watts of thermal waste, this is right around the range of overclocked CPUs. So I started scouting the landscape for higher end CPU coolers. Lo and behold, I found one that was perfect for this project. The heat sink was rated for up to 225 watts of thermal waste. Now the question remained, how am I going to keep the laser module attached to the heat sink so it doesn't melt off? The thing about the heat sink is it's designed to be strapped on and mounted to a CPU and not necessarily a laser diode array. Ironically enough, this is where 3D printing came into use. The plastic mounts that came with the heatsink weren't exactly designed to strap to a Nub M37 125 watt laser diode array. So I started measuring my parts and started modeling something in Blender. The laser holster came out quite nice and it snuggled around the laser and the heatsink quite well. For the first time, it felt like I was a mechanical engineer for a brief period of time trying to fit something to my design. All in all, I was quite satisfied with what I designed in Blender and printed through the 3D printer. The remaining concern I had is that if the laser diode got too hot, that this might potentially melt the plastic holster around the actual design. But at that point in time, there's no way to test that concern to see if this was actually going to be an issue with the design. I was still trying to figure out how I was going to power this thing in the first place. So for safe measures, I ended up printing the object with ABS instead of just standard PLA. After I finished up the holster that would hold the laser diode array to the heatsink, it was then time to power the thing. At the beginning, I was scouring to see where I could buy 18650 batteries in bulk and maybe create a custom power supply that would then power the laser diode. After scouting around for quite some time looking to buy in bulk 18650 50 batteries, I began to think and ponder if I actually wanted to build the array myself. And that's not even mentioning how I was going to charge that particular array that was so non-standard. But then a light bulb clicked with power tool batteries. Most electric yard tools and power tools required high drain batteries in the first place. It was then I remembered that these batteries themselves are 18650 arrays. I then remembered I had a 40 volt Ryobi battery in my garage, which I always used to power my electric weed eater and blower. This battery was perfectly capable of supplying the power I needed to actually power the laser diode array. The the battery stores about 144 watt hours worth of energy. If the laser diode array is sucking up about 320 watts of electrical power, then this battery should last a total of 20 minutes. The last problem in adequately powering the device is of course supplying 96 volts and not just 40. The great thing about the microelectronics revolution that it's pretty much standardized every boost converter to have a load sensing feedback controller. The load sensing microcontroller of the boost converter can then adjust its parameters to meet the voltage requirements of the particular load. After looking around for some high power boost converters, a couple landed on my radar and they were actually quite fairly cheap. When they arrived, it was only a matter of wiring everything up. While this chassis is a prototype, it's far from the final design and I'm still screwing around with Blender to make a consolidated design because I want this to be portable at the end of the day. So subscribe and stick around for videos later on this project. Without further ado, I'll quit boring you with all the engineering talk and let you enjoy your pyro porn. That's probably the reason why you clicked on the video in the first place. I hope you enjoy watching me set stuff on fire.
Yeah, that's how powerful it is. Let's extinguish this. Get that plasma string. Ouch. I'm gonna run myself here. Ugh, setting shit on fire too. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe. Have a nice day.